I'm here with um, Atlas Losing Group, and my first question would be to those who don't know you, could you introduce the band to tell us something about how the band started? Uh, we're a, what do you call it, crossover punk act from the south of Sweden. And we started back in 2005 as more of a melodic punk rock hardcore act. Sounding like satanic surfers, bad religion style. And uh, with the years we evolved more, putting more of our personal influences into the band, into the music. And now, I don't know really, what are we? Crossover. That's something. It's hard. Try to make good music. Yeah. We don't want to label us, we just we just play what we want to play. We've been around for 10 years. Uh, Soon 11. Yeah, in January we've been around for 11 years. Um, just, yeah, we've been touring since 2008, I think. Um, just, I mean, we, we live to play live. That's the most fun thing to do. Okay, so you, you were talking about your influences in the early days, so what was that? Your your influences in the first days and maybe those influences change over the time? I think uh, when we started, me and Stefan started the band, we wanted to be a... Uh, I came up to you, he was pretty few years younger than me, he still is. And I uh, said like, yeah, we should start a skate punk band or something. Because at the time there were no active bands of that style in Sweden. There had been in the 90s a lot of bands. The 90s was really huge. And then we wanted to revive the whole scene, just yeah. making a skate punk band, straight up. And then we So started. we did, I, I mean. We have three records out and two EPs and uh, I mean, influences, of course, you know, I don't listen to what I listened to 10 years ago. Or of course I listen to it and I can like it, but you always find new stuff that you like for different reasons. And we just try to, you know, I don't know. When we write songs, we just try to make the best songs. And we don't, we don't really try to make a specific kind of music. We just write songs with drums, bass, and two guitars. And whatever comes out, just, just needs to feel right. Yeah, we don't uh, really try hard to sound a specific way. We just whatever comes out of our hands is the music. We want. Yes. But there is no like no specific bands you would name as yeah. having any influence. I mean, I Iron Maiden, most. Yeah. But also a lot of the back then, yeah. bands, Bad Religion. I've always listened, not always, but listened to Bad Religion since I was really young, and uh, I still hold them as a strong influence of mine. Their choice of melodies, uh, the way they do their easy songs, the whole sound is very important to me. Um, also, propaganda, that's a more crossover between metal and punk rock now. Also, always been an influence for, for me. But uh, then it comes to the metal bands, of course, Iron Maiden, Early Metallica, and other thrash metal bands, it means a lot to me personally. But from the beginning, we did not, you know, involve those influences. And everyone in the band also listens to different music. Like, we yeah. Say, like, Max listens to a lot of <laughs> no, but <laughs> rock. We listen to all kinds of music that is a good tune, you know? Yeah. We, and we try to get it into our songs in a natural way. And, uh, I'm a complete metal maniac since I was younger and uh, that was what I liked before I like, uh, started to like. I think know. before we, uh, when we started as a skate punk band, more or less, we, you know, with, over the years we've, we've grown really comfortable with or like confident in the music we do. So that's probably why we also incorporate a lot of more like heavy metal guitars yeah. because we think that why should we limit ourselves to only making punk rock or this when we can also try to incorporate stuff we love from other bands and that's that's probably why we why we sound the way we do on the actual we're gonna like continue to just you know not limit ourselves no limits that's the, yeah. the key so i guess each of you have their their own influences but it's, it's not no band influencing you you 
put on yourself so you really have to. Right? It's just yeah, yeah, exactly. whatever you want, it just needs to feel right? exactly. um, And then, of course, we can explain it by telling which badge we like, etc. Et it's going to take a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really. So, anyway, you're touring with Ichi Poops Kid now. Um, How's that going? Are you enjoying the tour? <laughs> that? For sure. I mean, we're we, nice guys, the whole band, the crew. This is the fourth show, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, we have another five shows or something. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's really fun. I mean, they're such great guys, really professional. The crew is great. And we, I mean, we've toured a lot as well, both supporting bigger bands like, uh, and also playing as a headline act with support bands. So we really know how to, you know, now we're a support band, we can only play for 30 minutes, you know. We know maybe different than ours. But yeah, but we exactly we know both the both sides of touring on all the sides, you know, so we, it's I think we're pretty easy to tour with because we we have a lot of touring backers. Being a support band is um, yeah, as you say, a limited show time, but also you know, kinda stressy changeovers, we have to get all our fucking shit off the stage and blah blah blah. And when it's over, it's over and you can do this interview. You know, I mean, that's, there are, that's good. of course, there are, I mean, playing support, you know, now we play for in front of a, a little bit of a new crowd, a little bit of a younger crowd, and they seem to like it a lot, so it's a really good way for us to gain new fans and meet new yeah. people and see new places. So you guess that tour package is um, working out in the right way? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of yeah. Okay, awesome. If I'm... My information is correct, like you you got a new singer last year, right? Yeah. Um, how did that work out? Um, how did, I don't know, how, how did your fans accept that? Is, have there I been um, any significant changes in working with the band or was it just like a smooth? It was really, really smooth. I, I mean, think, yeah. uh, you know, we, we recorded an album, the, the latest album we have out, Currents. We recorded with our old singer, uh, Rodrigo. and. Uh, Things were turbulent between us. We didn't really uh, see the band the, the same way, and uh, we parted ways. And Nicholas joined in. And at first, we were kind of scared, you know. Uh, of course, it's a big change. Yeah. Change yeah. How would people change react? Change. Uh, exactly. What should we do with this album? We have to get it out. You know, a lot of stress and uh, and such. But uh, I think everything went really smooth. At the first tour, people were like, you know checking him out uh, and they all accepted us they all accepted uh, our new vocalist and uh, in my opinion this is very good for the band Nicholas is an amazing singer and a very good friend it's fitting really good into the family so yeah, well, it's it was really good. quite an impressive show anyway so I really enjoyed his performance and he seemed to fit thank in pretty you. well thank you so, thank you yeah we will tell <laughs> Yeah. So you were some fans uh, maybe, you know, want it to be like the good old days, but fuck them. Yeah, it's not going to I happen. Mean, a band no, changes. no, exactly. Uh, time, right? A band changes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Time so, for chapter two. So, chapter two. Chapter and here we are. Five, three, six. <laughs> uh, you, you were mentioning bad religion earlier, so, like, you are. Compared to bands like Bad Religion, you are a pretty young kind of punk, whatever band, not putting any label on you yeah. anyway. Um, how do you feel and what, what do you think about um, punk scene nowadays, in your days, and especially in Sweden maybe, if there is anything different there, any specialities <coughs> to that? I don't know, I think uh, it's, it's hard being a punk band. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, punk rock was really being in the 90s. Or, I mean, in Germany it still is more than in Sweden, I think, like from what I've experienced. In Sweden it's, Sweden it's more trendy and like, in a, in a way. When we started there was a lot of hardcore bands going on in Sweden. But I get the feeling also that when we started doing this early 90s skate punk music, we woke up other bands interested in this as well. I think after we started this and kept on doing it, other people were, you know... Or maybe we just caught a trend as well. I don't know. No, I, mean, I don't know. But the, I got the feeling that other people started to have the guts to do it. Because somebody started again. So, 
But, uh, yeah, that's just it. What was the question again? Like, <laughs> about the, the punk scene in general, what do you think about it? I think it's hard. I mean, punk rock became mainstream early 2000s. I mean, I think I'm thinking about, you know, the big Green Day albums and Offspring and everything. Yeah. So punk rock went kind of mainstream, I suppose. Yeah. Maybe in the 90s as well. But I still, think, the, that's like there's, there's, not punk, there's not much punk in punk rock anymore. There's, I mean, at least not if you want to live on live off of music or you know, being a big punk band. There's no punk except for maybe the lyrics. I, I, I think, think it's difficult. I think Germany is a much better country than Sweden for music in general, like live music, especially in punk rock. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, Sweden has a really a lot of great names in punk rock. You always have had and metal as well. Um, I think we're better at exporting. Like a lot of bands are bigger outside of Sweden. I think I mean, we are a lot bigger in Germany than we are in Sweden. Okay, so you notice like any significant significant differences, like from the audience, maybe? I think both. I think I always say this because I think it's true. Because Sweden is, uh, in a way, a really bad country for live music because. Sweden has a lot of restrictions and rules, like in a live club, drinking. You can't such. smoke inside. For like exactly. drinking, there's like the age thing. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's 18 in Germany as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, 16 for beer. 16. Okay. Yeah. We have 18. And you can't be drunk in a club. Like if you are, if you can see that he is drunk, he's going going out. Okay. And there's a decibel level for the sound for 100 dB, which is basically really hard to to keep. And all, all these factors, when they come together, it's like hard to have a really, you know, a good show. Yeah, okay. At a good show, everyone's drunk and everything's loud and, you know. That's not going to happen in Sweden. So. No, exactly. So, then, so, so then the, the audience is more like... There's no small venues either. It's if you want to play at a youth place like you do here sometimes, in Sweden, there's no bar, you know, there's nothing. It's a youth youth center, and then the older people don't want to go there because it feels stupid. You know, we have no small venues. Like in, 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 in Germany, every bar has a stage in the corner where there's live music going on. And in Sweden, it doesn't happen as much. And uh, therefore, we chose to, on our first tour in 2008, we chose to go to Germany and Europe because we just felt that we didn't belong in Sweden. Like, yeah. It's hard to... We played in Sweden songs. before, but uh, yeah. I mean... It's, it's only these... I'm not saying you have to drink, of course. Uh, it, it makes people less stiff. It's adding a lot of fun to the show. Right? Yes. <laughs> you, you said it. <laughs> I said that. Yeah, yeah. you said that. Not me. Yeah, and speaking about that, like... <laughs> I, I do touring and the first tour in 2008, so you've been touring around for a while, right? Yeah. Um, is there any, I don't know, any funny or significant story you can tell from a band's touring experience? There are, like maybe just one or two there, there are, amazing stories. There are so many stories, I, I guess, but it's, you know... It's hard to think of a specific. Yeah, because each day is the same, yet it's not the same. You know, it's the same... It happens so much all the time that when you get home, you get kind of depressed because it's all empty again, you know? Yeah. It happens so much that in the end it's just all a blur for me. I can't really remember what happened and where. So I I have the stories in here, but I don't have them. Like, I don't know, like it's, we, we, get it's this we get this question a lot. Yeah, it's I really hard. Like, I remember I walked... Uh, I got lost in a huge building with apartments at once. In, uh, and I couldn't uh, find the apartment. Spain. Where, yeah, I couldn't find uh, where we slept. It was fucking impossible. All the doors looked the same, and it were you always, were always, a bit always. Drunk. I was really fucking drunk. It took me yeah, we, we one hour he, uh, uh, because we he was so drunk he just walked away, and then we we thought that he just went out into the street and died because we really thought we lost him for a while. I was just around in the house. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, shit happens all the time. Uh, but it's hard to. No, it's not really boring. We have to come up with some really cool uh, memory, some weird drug stuff. Oh. Yeah, but I can't fuck, I can't remember. Yeah, you know, those stories start like, you know, that one time I was so drunk. Okay. And now. You know, I usually time... was the drunk guy before. Uh, I don't drink anymore. You know that but time I... you were drunk? Yeah. <laughs> but I can't remember any stories. No, that's a problem. <laughs> you, you have to remember them. 
there was this one time at when we supported Millicolin. Uh, oh, when I, I fell down from a bed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we were supporting Millicolin like this all over Europe, and he was so drunk that he fell from a uh, yeah, from a bed. Yeah, from, high up from a bed. On it landed on his yeah. hand. Yeah. And then he on was his so hand. So yeah. it was I had no feelings. It was like this. I could do it like this. He was like a and I had two three shows more to do. So I, but I fixed it. I don't know how. He couldn't play. <laughs> like he, he was just I could move uh, like yeah. this. Yeah. Just pretend play. Yeah. yeah, but I played with one finger. We like were this. we were super Maybe. angry at him because he fucked it up. Yeah, that was fucked up. But I somehow we got it through. And nobody would pull it through. Nobody looked at me like we were pulling it. Fuck it. We this one time, this other time when you were so drunk? I don't know, uh, many, many times. But specific stories, I can't come up with them like this. I can't, sorry. It's, it's hard. Anyway, next time maybe. Th there's more uh, sad stories than fun stories, you know? We always remember the, oh, remember that place, we were feeling so bad, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, it's it's hard, it's hard, yeah. hard to remember. Okay, anyway, maybe that's enough speaking about the past. How about the future? Your plans for the future? I mean, you do have what do you have? New tours, new tours. I mean, we, uh, this is the last tour this year, and then we have a festival in December in Germany as well. Yeah. And then, yeah, we will continue to write songs. We have a bunch of songs already, maybe seven or eight songs. Um, and in March, February, March, we'll go on tour again. We'll be back here as well. Yeah. So that's what we have right now. We yeah, have record the new album, the festival summer, and then there's some talk about going to Japan next year. Oh, awesome. We always, always have a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, but that's just an idea, or is there more specific? Plans about that because Japan sounds awesome. I mean, we've, we've, we've had some offers and stuff, we just need to check, you know, check everything. Yeah. That would be fun. I mean, we, the first record, when we, the, our first record deal was with a Japanese label back in 2007. So it would be great to go to Japan finally. Yeah. That, that's how it all started for us in the MySpace days. We hooked up with this uh, Japanese label called Bells on Records. We used to put on, or still put on, out a lot of records from skate punk bands. And when we got that record deal, a lot of the labels in Europe, they saw that, oh, they have a record deal in Japan. It sounds really good. So they wanted to also, maybe, oh, this band is interesting. It was always like that. Someone's interested, and then everyone was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. so, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, Those were the days. That would be a full circle to be able to come to Japan. But I, main priority for me is to do the new album. Um, yeah, as you said, we have uh, rehearsed a few songs, and I have like half finished songs, maybe forty, in my computer. So it wouldn't be a problem. But we talked about trying to record before the summer. We'll see what happens. Uh, we don't want to say too much because then we will make people disappointed. Like yeah. the last album, we took, it took us forever to finish. Yeah. We, we will learn. Okay, no. Uh, delete everything about the album. Never mind. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> no album yet. We'll tell you when it's out. Yeah, yeah. It will be okay. out. So we will be curious. Uh, yeah. That's the plan. I guess so, so festivals great. in the summer. Maybe if there's other options for other countries uh, outside of Europe, maybe we'll hook him up. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. There's always stuff coming up. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard uh, to be this early on the on the booking, but yeah, we have to start doing it soon. Anyway. So uh, good luck for all the fans. Sounds really awesome, if you ask me. Thanks. So I hope it all works out the way. I'm sure sure it it's going Thank to you. happen. So. I guess we're close to the end, but anyway... Do you have any more questions? Works. The more no. we talk, the less we have to help them. So, oh, okay, so maybe some more questions. Let me check my list. <laughs> no, actually, you know, there is just one question left, and that is like, last words for you. You can say whatever you want, and the more you talk, the less you have to help your mates. So, talk as long as you want. Right? Visit our so, Facebook page. Uh, like okay. us on, fel on Facebook. Stop that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, make sure to listen to our music and uh, 
time. Yeah. He's fucking annoying sometimes, yeah. I have nothing more to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> no. Thanks for checking us, checking us thank out. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for the interview. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.